All right, everybody, we are back live again. Dynasty Mirror Search for Uhuru. And I have the brother, Philip Zhao. Yao. Yep, Zhao, Zhao. Zhao. There we go. Zhao with us on uh, with us today. We're going to be discussing um, how to build a house in Ghana. You know, I know a lot of people are interested in, especially black Americans, are interested in uh, building homes, buying land uh, in Africa, specifically Ghana. Uh, I had the brother Daniel Simmons on with us uh, earlier this year, and he spoke on how to buy land in Ghana. Uh, and now I got it. I had I received the email this morning. Did you email me this morning or was it yesterday? It was this morning, right? This morning. This morning. You emailed me this morning. And, you know, you're telling me your story on how uh, and, you know, not to not to beat my own drum, but or pat my own back. But how I uh, inspired you to buy land and build a home in Africa. And I'm, I'm happy. That's the that's the objective of this platform is to help people consider other well, other options, specifically in Africa, to consider opportunities in Africa, to connect the diaspora with Africa. You know, that that's the objective of this platform. And you move forward with it. You did. You're almost done. Um, and, you know, we have to commend you for that, for for, for doing that. Yeah, man, I'm almost done. Almost man. done. So, yeah. Good. So, so just, just tell us, you know, about yourself and, uh, you know, what motivated you to to build your home and what you do currently and all, all that good stuff. So people get a little background on you. OK, well, just to make a long story short, uh, like I told you before, um, I was born in Ghana. I left Ghana at the age of 10 and um, just make a long story short. Recently, I went back home for my father's funeral four years ago. Right. And that was the first time that I've been to Ghana in many, many, many years, over 30 years, you know, and um, I came back, of course, then. And um, I wanted to buy some land in Sunyana because I never even thought about going back home to live. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just Googling about buying land because I knew about scams in uh, in Africa in general, you know, when you buy land, you gotta be careful who you're buying it from. Even if you buy it from a chief, sometimes they sold it to like two, three different people, right? Brother, not to cut you, cut, sorry to cut you off. Are you familiar with the, is it Finakwa, Finkara? Have you heard of that? No. no. Okay, all right, never mind. go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. No, so um, anyway, um, my uh, I came back again and um, I found you on, on the Google, right? Mm -hmm. On, uh, on YouTube. Right. And you were always talking about Ghana, going to Africa and, uh, specifically Accra. You went to Accra, you went to Kenya, you went to all over, all over Africa. And, um, so then my wife says, cause we watch you together. And my wife says, you know what? Why don't you buy the land in Accra? Mm. So I called my aunt, like I told you, I called my aunt and my aunt knew someone in Accra. And uh, this guy's name is Prempe. And uh, I went to his house and he says, oh, yeah, man, I know, you know, like, you know how they talk about land guards in Ghana right. and uh, things like that. But um, he knew a chief and uh, his nephew, um, the guy's name is Mate, took me up in those hills and I met the guy and uh, make a long story short. I bought four plots, right? Four plots in the hills, West Hills Mall, right in that area. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's right next to Coco Beach Beach. I can walk to the beach wow. in like 10 minutes. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, Coco Beach Beach, Bojo Beach, and I mean, all kinds of buildings going up, even bigger than mine. And you saw you saw the size of mine. Right. I have a five bedroom house and uh, five bathrooms, right? On on four on four plots. And I bought the and the plots are cheap. Um, so for the total for the four. Cost me twenty two thousand dollars U.S. That's it. That's, that's it. That's near it. the beach. Near that's the beach. It. And it's and it's like by the mall. Um, anything you want in Accra, I'm in Accra itself. You know, it's I mean it's pretty nice, and the the wind is always blowing. It's never hot. It's nice. If you could do me a favor, the pictures you sent me, if you could retext them or email them, because for some reason I don't they they deleted off my phone. Okay. Um, again. If you could just, yeah, if you could just retext them or email me, and then I'll share them with everybody so they get an idea and a visual of uh, everything you're you're doing over there. Now let, let's talk about the process. So let's start off with, I guess, negotiating and buying the land, 
Like, how was that process? Like, listen, okay. Compared to now, like America. That, yeah, that's where you have to be careful. Okay. And um, so I was telling my wife, right? Because there's all these scams going on and everybody's talking about, oh yeah, you know, you can't trust the Africans, you can't trust the Ghanaians, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm always telling my uh, brother and my sister that, right? Right. So what I wanted to do was to finish that building, right? Because I, I got the inspiration from you and I wanted to finish that building and even like host like African-Americans that are willing to come to, uh, to Africa and look at the place so they can stay over my house, go around, they're gonna go to Cape Coast Castle, they're gonna do whatever they want, mm. right? Mm. And then look to see if that's where they wanna live or if it's a, it's a, if it's a possibility they wanna live there. And, uh, and I'll, I'll brief them on how not to get scammed. And, and you know, like African-American will say, okay, look, how much is the land? Oh, and the guy is going to show you some kind of email and they'll tell you, oh, um, the thing is $2,500. And they'll sign a check, boom, boom, for $2,500. Here it is, right? Mm -hmm. But you shouldn't do that. You should never do that. When they say they have the land for you, they have to, now they have to prove it, right? So they have to go and get that indenture. Remember that green slip that I sent you? I, you got to, if you could, when you get a chance, I'm, I'm, I'm going to send it, you. I don't know what happened to the text messages. If you email them or just, just you know, in fact, no, that's not it. Just text them back to me and I'll email them to myself. Oh, so I'm I can show texting it now. Okay, perfect. But anyway, um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll explain it and then Go I'm gonna talk about it, right? Go ahead. Okay. So they'll come to you and say, well, we have land for you. We want you to buy land, right? First, they're gonna tell you, oh, since you're an African-American, they're gonna try to overcharge you. Of course. Okay, so one plot, somebody can come up with a crazy price like $10,000. Mm -hmm. Anytime they tell you that, you walk away. Do not buy a plot in Ghana for ten thousand dollars, even even in, even in opera, because we're told opera is expensive. And don't listen to that nonsense. Do not. Don't listen to it. And uh, some of like if, when they realize that you're coming from America, they think you're out of you're made out of gold. Mm -hmm. So what they will do is say, oh, "Well, this house is like five hundred thousand U.S. dollars." <laughs> now, if you buy a house for five hundred thousand U.S. dollars in Africa, you're an idiot. Why? Because you're never going to make that kind of money. 5,000 cities is considered great money. And you know how much that is? That's like a thousand, a thousand dollars and something. So if you and, calculate and, that, that's under $15,000. Right. And that's my thing. Like uh, you see these housing prices that right. they're showing us. And I'm saying to myself, I know the average Ghanaian can't afford For that. you to, to the, they want to sell that to the African American. Uh huh. But to an average Ghanaian, a Ghanaian would never, ever buy a house for that price. Never. Right. And, and, and that's pretty much anywhere. Like, that's considered too much. That's, that's, that's the kind of con they put on you. That's why I want to make sure that, you know, guys coming from here and trying to buy land don't go and have a bad experience, right? Because they can burn you. And then all of a sudden, you know, like you have high hopes into going to Africa and having a good experience. Right. All of a sudden, you meet up with some scam artist, and then the African experience is done. Right. Right. So what they have to do is this. Okay. First, you're gonna give them like just a quarter of the money, and you're gonna tell them you do all the paperwork and everything checks out. If everything checks out, I'll pay you half when you give me the papers. Then when I finalize all the paperwork, you get the rest. Mm. That's the only way you should do it. You pay anything up front, you're done. Because then what they'll do is like sometimes if you get anything up, if, they give, if you give them everything up front, what they'll do is this. They will, um, and if you don't put a building on it right away, they'll go ahead and sell it to somebody else. And then someone else will go and put a building on it and then they'll move you outside somewhere else. Wow. Yeah. 
So it's never smart to give the money up front. Just a quarter, they give you the paperwork, give them half, and then all the final paperwork, which is um, it's like a, it's got this thing on it, like a ID number. Now, okay. once you go to my land, there's gonna be a, a little pillar like this big. And if you put a computer, uh, it's a computer scanner, and my name will pop up. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that's legitimate, that's my land. Nobody wow. can ever go on it or anything because I can always come back and says, look here, this is my plot. And if you ever try to build on it, I can knock it down. That's okay. the only way that is legit. Now, explain to me or to us specifically, because, again, I just I'm, I have the mindset. I buy my land. I pay my taxes each year or whatnot. I'm done. So, okay. number one, with that being said. To a lot of uh, people, they don't. We we still don't understand this fifty year, ninety nine year lease. Yeah, don't worry about that lease. Um, it's just it's just paperwork, right? But once you once you pay for that land, no one else is gonna come back and say, "Oh, your fifty years are up." Oh, you have to repay for that land again. No, you don't. You don't. They're never gonna come back. Mm -hmm. Never. That's it. Okay. Once you build that house, that house is yours and is in your family forever. That's it. Okay. Perfect. And then uh, let's speak on taxes. Like, do you have to pay yearly taxes? Like, how does it work? Yeah. Uh, and the taxes are very little. Um, it, it won't cost you anything. It's literally nothing. I've been building, right? But the only um, the only time it's going to cost you is like when you're trying to get those permits, right? Right. And yeah, of course. Those permits are expensive to the average Ghanaian. But for me and you, mm -hmm. it's like that whole process has cost me less than one thousand dollars. That's it. That's it. Okay. Um, the guy that helped me buy the land knows someone in the housing commission, right? See in Ghana. Mm -hmm. All you just have to know is you, you have to know people. Right. Yeah. If you don't know anyone, then that's when they try to pull a wool over your eyes. That's when they try to scam you. Like, I got my Ghanaian passport in one day. One day. I'm not right. kidding you. Physical uh, passport. Huh? Physical passport. Yeah. Wow. One day. So what I did was um, I went to the, you know, the art center. You know the art yeah, center. Yeah, art, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there. Yeah. If you go on the other side of it, that's where all the that's where all the government buildings are on the other side. Across yeah, the yeah, yeah. You go on the other side of it, not even inside the buildings. You have people sitting on the outside, trying to help you with your passport, writing it out so that the government can accept it. Right, and it's okay. legitimate. It's the it's the it's it's also part of the government, but they're outside because a lot of people from Ghana don't understand how to uh, fill out that application, mm -hmm. right? And then so these guys will fill it out for you and it'll eliminate, them. huh? I guess you can just tip them, I guess? Yeah, so that, well, they'll do it like so that like the government doesn't reject it. They know how to fill it out to a point where they'll say, oh, well, you filled it out wrong. You've got to come back, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what they do. So I took it over there and uh, to get it expedited, I paid 700 cities to get it expedited. Oh, wow. 700 cities is about, it's almost 200 bucks, right? If you want to take the normal process, which would take you about a month, that'll cost you like 50 cities or 100 cities, right? But I wanted it right away because I had to come back home. Well, have you, have you started sending the uh, pictures yet or texting them? I got it. Okay. Yeah, just text a couple and I could uh, email them to myself so, so I could, uh, you know, so we could show the uh, people. Uh, now, let me ask you this. How did you find the help to actually build the house? Because even here in America, you have a lot of shady contractors. Do not, yeah, yeah. You're going to send them the money and they're going to keep it or they're going to spend it. Right. Yeah. You really, you really, really have to have someone that you can trust. I'm telling you, man, Dinus, uh, because you're going to be in for a heartache. You send like 
uh, $5,000, $10,000, and you think someone is building the house for you, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes you can't even trust family members. Right? You got to have someone that's really, really trustworthy. Um, do not trust those other contractors, you know, like the ones that advertise and say, okay, we can build your house for you. It'll end up costing you like $200,000. Right. That structure that I'm putting up, right? Mm -hmm. With the land, and that house on it, I've spent less than a hundred thousand dollars. Hey, send, send the picture so I can show people. Yeah. So you have a beautiful home from what from what you've seen. That's a beautiful house. Oh man, yeah. For a hundred thousand and some change, that's an absolutely gorgeous plus, house. Plus the land. Plus the land. Yeah. Land. Yeah. That I mean, that's as is beautiful. Absolutely uh beautiful. So you're um you're I just sent you I just sent you a, a picture of the house. Where they're doing that borehole, right? Okay. Did I'm you eat you another one no. by the um by the beach? And then like pictures of the electrical people doing the electrical work. Okay, you know, I just got it. Here we go. Here we go. Let me uh let me try to email this to myself real quick. Uh oh yeah, this is a beautiful house. Hold on one second. I gotta email this. Five bedrooms, five bathrooms. What's it what's like? Oh, here's a here's a question in the chat room. How big is um uh, how big is a plot? A plot is like 100 by 80. Okay. Yeah, a plot is 100 by 80. It's pretty big. Okay, so and you say you got four plots? I've got four. Wow. And and the four cost me $22,000 for four. Mm. In the middle of Accra. Mm. By the beach, you see, um, I'm sending you another, like, okay, if you're standing on top of my hill, you're going to see the beach, big buildings, uh, people building. I'm mm. sending you that now. Let's see here. Uh, got a couple. Let's see what we got in the chat room. Uh, Shana and I do just, she's just, she wants to ensure, make sure that, uh, that no one could come and get your land after 50 years after you build a house on no, it. No, 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 nonsense. No, no chance. No chance of that. That's not true. Okay, let's see what the else. House is on it, that's it. That's your house. Let me ask, why why are you know they have they, you know they have that lease here too, not um 99 years. Right, exactly. Cause I know, um, like I said, I know several people who, you know, who have land in Ghana and they have, you know, like a, I know one guy that has like a 30 year lease. I'm just, and to me, I, I that's just- That's nonsense, look. Yeah, that's nonsense. Don't, don't let them do that. You, like the person that's selling you the plot, just tell him, look, just tell him you want that 99 years. Uh -huh. And they would do whatever it takes to give you the 99 years. Okay. Yeah, because they want the money. True. Yeah, they want the money. So if you say, okay, if the guy says, oh, 30 years, I've never heard of 30 years. Yeah, his name, in fact, he has a video. I did a video, his brother Daniel Simmons, I did a video with him on here, how to buy land in Ghana. And he's building like a resort kind of. Yeah. Um, all right, like maybe I want to say like an hour outside of Accra. Uh-huh. Um, but he said he had a 30 year lease that he negotiated with the chiefs and oh, you can't listen. <laughs> hey, sometimes those chiefs diners, the something else, man, you'll sell that plot to, to you, to me and to my uncle. But, but, uh, Phil, let me ask you this. Why are, I mean, why are people so dishonorable like this and just it's shady? The poverty, I just, man. It's the poverty, you know, like, if you, if you go to Ghana, like especially, I was born in Sinyane, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you that unemployment rate has got to be like 90%. Uh -huh. And you see that. You've been to Accra. Right. You're driving by. People are selling stuff in the street. Right. If you're not selling, you, you don't eat. have a job, there's nothing coming in. So especially in Accra, uh, people will see you driving around you're in your you're on your cell phone you're dressed you know you're dressed and you're coming from america and they think you have money 
and that's how they can just get that money. And so they're scamming you because of that poverty. They just, it's, that's just the way it is. I just, I just think it's unfortunate because yeah, it's really bad. It's really bad. Yeah. Yeah. People don't think long-term and building relationships. They just think now and hustle just to eat. That's right. That day. That's right. And it's and just, you can't build a business but, like that. But you know what though? Don't get caught up with that stuff and having to take them to court because they will drag it out for like five years and you end up spending 10 times the amount of money that you spent in that scam. Like, let's say someone scams you for like $10,000, okay? Right. And you want to take them to court. Man, that process is so slow. They bribe the, they bribe the judges. They bribe the lawyers. Man, look, it's, just don't get caught up in that stuff. Don't, you, you don't want to get up. You don't want to get caught up in their court system because you just, you just write off that money. Right. Just write it off and just move on. So that's why I'm telling you that when you're trying to buy land, they have to bring that paperwork. And sometimes they can even take it to some other source and make it look like it's legitimate. Right. Uh -huh. But if it's legitimate, what would happen is this. They'll, they'll, they'll sell you the land. Once you start digging on the land, I guarantee you. If, it's, if it doesn't belong to that person, someone is going to show up and they're going to ask you, what are you doing here? This plot doesn't belong to you. So the, the first thing you do is when you buy that plot, you just start digging and just put some blocks on it. Once you do that and no one shows up, it's pretty legitimate. But you, you must also know where they live. Like if you don't know where they live, don't buy anything from them. The people that sell you the land. Yeah. So if I'm trying to sell you the land, you've got to know my family. You've got to know where I live. Because mm -hmm. if they're not trying to show you where they live and you don't know any of their family members, don't buy it from them. Now, as far as as far as like um, title searches and, you know, inspections and all that, how, how uh, did you have a well, you didn't have a real estate agent, I guess, but. How, how does that work? They just take money from you. Mm -hmm. um, the title searches, you just have to go to the lands department. Okay. Right? But don't do that. Let that person that's selling the plot to you, let them do it. You vet, you vet them. Let them do it. Don't do it yourself. Okay. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me show some of these pictures real quick. I got them right here in my email. Let me go ahead and share the screen. Uh, so we could take a look. Oh, no, not that one. Here we go. All right, so I'm up to my email. So this is um one of the videos right here. Oh, dang, I can't even play the video. Hold on. Hold on one second. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. I can play it. Yeah, I'll take a look at it and then um I think I can I'll play it. The one I haven't sent and I'll send it to you. All right, I gotta do it like this. Give me give me one second, you guys. Sorry about that. Yeah. Hold on, let me screen share again. Let's see here. Application window. Yep, here we go. Here we go. Blow this up. So this is the actual house. That's the actual house, yes. And look at all that land around it. That's mine. Uh-huh. Yeah. And look at all those up in those hills. Nice buildings, hotels behind wow. on the side. That's a nice house. Resorts. Yeah. All right, hold on. Let's uh let's pull up another video. Um, look at this one right here. Give me one second. Download it. All right, here we go. Now, this is the front of the house. Here we go. It's a nice house. Oh yeah. And if you go behind it, if you if you go behind it, you can just walk straight to the beach. Mm. Yeah. You walk straight to the beach. Okay, let's 
see here. Let's check out some of these other oh, ones. Did I send you the beach? Uh, let me, I think so. Um, hold on, let me, uh, let me see. Let's see what this one is, let's see here. I think this is it right here. Let me, uh, let me see. All right, it's uh, if it's not the beaches of uh, like grass around it or the yeah, there's a woman. Yeah, that now look. So if you're standing on top of my hill, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you see. Okay, so that's the beach right here in the water. Yeah, that's the beach behind it, but that's on the other side. But like, if you go behind there, so like, I'm just showing you a picture of the hills um like people are building all around like look at the houses that they're building watch you see see all those houses there people are building all throughout the hills man yeah and it's like developed on the other side is that chinese community right behind the west hills mall okay um and there's some uh, there's a lot of african americans there <laughs> you oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, Americans. Uh, let me, uh, I, I got some of your, oh, here we go. Let me email some of these pictures that you sent me too so we can uh, take a look at them. So this is, I know I have some of the interior of the ceiling and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sending you uh, the beach too. It's, um, okay. Bojo Beach is like one of the cleanest beaches in Ghana. Okay. I, I can't I can't remember the beach I went to. Um, um I, I don't remember. I just I, well, of course, you know, I went to El Mina and all that, but I, I don't remember the uh, actual beach I went to in Accra. Yeah, and 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 then so like you know, from my house, you can just get to Cape Coast Road in like five minutes. But how long of a drive is it? Like 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 three hours? Um, no, it's uh an hour and forty five minutes. Okay, you know, it was longer for us because we, we took the bus. So that's why we took the VIP bus. So we were 45 minutes. Okay, wow. And and it's it's just close to everything. Mm -hmm. It's just close to everything. You can go. Um, if you want to go to Kumasi, of course, then you can take the VIP bus. Mm -hmm. and we, we took the VIP five, bus. Five hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, see that? Like, yeah, I'm at the beach right there. So uh, you need to take like a little boat to the beach. And it's like, it's okay, like that beach, you see how empty it is? Yeah. Okay, well, it costs 20 cities to go in there, right? Uh-huh. 20 cities is like five bucks. Right. But look, there's no one there because it's too expensive. But for me and you, it's nothing. Right. And you can walk from your house to the beach. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, brother, is, is your wife Ghanaian? No, nah, she's American. I met her at Howard. We went okay. to together. What what uh what years were you at Howard? I graduated in nineteen eighty seven. Okay, yeah, you're probably um uh, uh my friend Jay Augustus Richards, he's a uh, actor. Okay. Uh, he, he's he's younger. He might have graduated maybe like 93, 94, maybe. Oh, do you oh you know that show The Game? On I don't watch it. The I, game I'm somewhat, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with it, but I don't I don't watch TV. Oh, okay. <laughs> but well, I, it, was, it was on TV. Mm -hmm. And it's a good show. Um, uh, Wendy Robinson, she's like a famous okay. actress. She went okay. to with us. She, she, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Went to the same school. Um, as a matter of fact, I was there when Puffy was there. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's right. Puffy was there for like, what, a, a year? And then that's he, uh, yeah, yeah. Then he left. Yeah. And you remember the Cosby show Cockroach? N no. Yeah, Cockroach also went to Howard at the same time. Oh, let me look him up. Let me look him up. I'll probably know when I see his face. On, on, on the Cosby show, uh, his name was Cockroach. Okay, I see him. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Carl Anthony Payne. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember him. I remember him. Yeah. Cause he played you know, in some other. Uh, he played in some other movies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, was okay. on Martin. he was on Martin. Yeah, he was on Martin. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, so your house is almost. Oh, let me um, pull up some of these. Almost pictures. done. House, a couple months. Done. Yeah. The so, we're starting tiling on Monday. Oh wow! Monday they're so, going to do tiles. The tile the tiles will take like a month, and then uh, we do the railing because it's like a uh, inside. It's a double foyer. Mm -hmm. It's a double foyer. Yeah, so it's tall. Oh yeah, really nice. Really, really nice. Uh, uh, CJH wants to know, did you employ Africans to build your house? Yeah, look, labor is cheap too, man, Dinas. Uh -huh. Labor, you know why? Or it's because no one has a job. And um, I met up with this contractor, right? And this contractor has helped me so much, right? And um, and all I'm doing is like just every once in a while I'll send him, you know, eight hundred dollars here, eight hundred dollars there, mm -hmm. you know, and eight hundred dollars will take you a long way in Ghana. Wow. Right. Yeah. And I'm telling you that whole the land, the four plots plus that house has cost me less than one hundred thousand dollars. I'm <laughs> under it. That's a beautiful house too. Under it. And the roof is long term. You see that roof on the top? Uh-huh. Nice. It's the best you can get in Ghana. Well, the thing is, I know there's a lot of really structures in Africa, period. They don't use the same roofing like we do here in America. They no, have no, no, no. No, it's, it's different. Yeah. It's different. Long, we have long term. And that, that roof is going to last 100 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I'm as far as, as people think, you know, like once you, you, and you've got to meet up with people that you can trust, right? Right. And right. Um, and anyone that needs any kind of help buying land, um, they can call me, and I can help them. Uh, I can hook them up with Prempe. Um, this there's one of the land guards, right, up in Accra. We become good friends. You know why? Because what I do is every time I'm going home. I'm taking back clothes like shoes, Nike gear, all kinds of stuff. Cause you know, I, I played, I played uh, at a high level. And so what right. I do is I take that stuff down there and they appreciate it so much. You know, they appreciate it so much that they, they watch my place. Um, you can't go on my land and try and do something silly. You can't, you're going to get in trouble. And I'm not even there now. Mm. But, but again, how were you able to find people you trusted to do? I mean, Amara said, uh, you know, water, drainage, electricity, plumbing. Like, you pretty much had to do all, the, and you had to pretty much install everything, correct? Yeah. So, well, what, what would happen is this like, okay, you have to drill a borehole. So, right. some people would do a well, but a borehole goes like deep, like 300 feet. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, and so you connect it to a pump, and that's how you do the water supply. Okay, and so yeah. that's free water. You don't have to pay. Okay? It's free water. Free water. So no water. No, no water, water bill. bill. Nothing. <sighs> wow. Yeah, no water bill, and the electricity. As soon as it's hooked up, it's man. Electricity in Ghana is like two hundred cities a month. Two hundred cities mm. a month. It's um, 50 bucks. Mm. Yeah, 50 bucks a month. So, uh, so uh, I want to know if we get some clarification. Are you in the middle of nowhere or like? Oh, no. Okay. You, you saw the pictures. Right. No, 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 no. I'm in Accra. Right okay. by West Hills Mall. I'm in Accra. Okay. Yeah. I'm right by the toll booth. Okay, like, okay. Um, on Cape Coast Road, on Cape Coast Road, okay. it's a toll booth, right? 
And okay, Google this. Google this guy. He lives okay. right next to me. Astomojan. Right. It's A S O M O A H. Oh, I got it right here. I know exactly who this is. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly that. A soccer player. Uh, I, he lives by you. Right by me. Okay, let me. Uh, Look at his house. Just Google his house. He bought his house for three million dollars. Oh wow, good, but yeah, but this is this is a three million dollar house. Yeah. <laughs> this is a uh, this is a this is beyond a compound. This is oh, let me let me show uh, let me oh, show yeah, his house. Show a picture of it. He lives right by yeah. me. Yeah, this is beyond a compound. This is a this is a, a city. <laughs> that's uh, Dinas. That's my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Yeah, right there. Right up in those hills. Let's see here. Let's show some of these pictures. You see, you see those hills around there. Yeah. Yeah, I live right there. Oh man, that's a, that's a match. That's definitely a match. Let's go to these. Yeah, he's he's a multi-million dollar player. Yeah, he played in Europe too. So you know, he played in Europe. He played in the Premiership. Um, he went to um Dubai to play. Look at that house. Yep, there he goes. Right there he goes. Right there. Yep. Yep. Now he plays soccer too. This guy right here, right next to him, or no? No, I can't see his face. Okay. Yeah. But like those guys, sometimes they just hang out with him. Okay. God, look at this. Look at this pool. Look at these steps to the pool. Look at that house. So, so every time you drive by, look. Every go ahead. time you drive by, that house is just lit up. It's on top of that hill. So he's on one hill, and I'm on the other hill. But it's the same neighborhood. So we're not in the bushes. No. <laughs> I wouldn't buy right. it if I was in the bushes. No chance. Yep. Yep, that's him right there. That's him right there. Is is he is he retired now or is he still playing? No, well, he's still, he's still, he's still playing. playing. Except yeah. that Donna didn't qualify for the World Cup this time. Yeah, it was just crazy. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, it's a lot of corruption. It's, I mean, you can go on and on, but it's that's what it is. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's him. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. That, that that is him. Yep. Okay. So yeah. So I'm, we're not in the bushes, man. We're not. No. No. And and before, okay, like just on the opposite side of the road of Cape Coast Road, right? It's another development. It's called McCarthy Hills. Okay. You can Google that too. At McCarthy Hills in Accra, it's right by me. How far are you from Airport Hills? Airport Hills is 45 minutes. Okay, it's farther. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, somebody wants to know how far are you from Spintex Road? S P Y N T E X Road? Spintex Road? Spintex Road? Road. And if somebody is ask, else is asking, how far are you from the Liberian Badr Baram refu refugee camp? Oh, I don't know any. Of, and I don't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah I don't know. Okay. I've never heard of it. Yeah. Oh, someone's asking, uh, why didn't you build a like a energy efficient home, like a green home, solar yeah. panels and all that? Well, you know what? Because I was watching, I was watching you, and um, that's, I don't want to say his name wrong. Bo, Bo, uh, Bomani. Bomani Taimbe. Yes, yes, yes. Bomani. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or he went down to um, he went down to like Tachiman, right? Okay. Tachiman is in the BA region. That's like uh, that's like a uh, farmland and stuff like that. Right, that's up north. But this gentleman went down there 2016, mm -hmm. and uh, he built a house on four on four plots, and he's got like sol solar panels. And so I'm I'm trying to get those too. I, I think I might get some solar panels. Yeah. There's a brother in right outside of Ankara named Brandon Rogers, Black American, who deals with uh -huh. that. I can connect you with him. Oh yeah. 
Uh, yeah, solar panels, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I can connect that. That's what he that's what he does. So because I've got solar panels in my house now here. Oh wow. Yeah. So yeah, because the space is pretty big and you need that. Hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, let's see what else we have in the chat room. Shout out to Holipsism um for the super chat, man. I, I appreciate it. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, I'm glad you're putting us up some good information because, you know, sometimes you look online and see these prices. Listen, don't, <laughs> uh, and like if you go, let's one guy, one person was trying to sell a house in mm -hmm. Ghana for one million dollars. OK, mm -hmm. OK, one million dollars. What services are you providing for me to pay one million dollars? Right. So if, right. if I'm paying one million dollars for a house. I've got to have a school system, um, roads, like, and not all the roads are paved. You know that, right? You know that. Well, Ghana's, Ghana's. I would say this: Ghana's roads in or Accra, Accra, Accra. Yeah, they're not that bad. No, they're pretty good. They're good roads. The roads yeah. in Accra are good. The yeah. roads in Accra are good. But what I'm saying is, uh, paying a million dollars for a home. You can buy a house for a million dollars in Atlanta. You can buy a million dollars, a million dollar home here in Maryland, mm -hmm. and it'll be a nice house. Right. So why should I go to Ghana to buy a million dollar home? When right. I can put it, like if I use my own money to build the house, like with two hundred thousand dollars, I can build a mansion twice as big as the one I'm building now. <sighs> wow. Yeah, you, you've got to know people. Don't believe those guys when they say, oh, yeah, we're selling this. That's that's like the foreign price. You know, like you, you go to the art center, right? Right. And they will call oh, the price to the Indian person than to you. Yeah, I had to talk them down. Yeah, they, yeah. they were tripping over there. Like, yeah. I'm not stupid. This ain't my first rodeo. I had to talk exactly. Them yeah. Because you know that, though. Look, how many people have traveled to the art center and that know what you know or mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. You understand that, right? right? So a person will go there, you have no experience, and the guy says, oh, my sister, this is a great thing. Um, it's going to cost you uh, $300. Right. Thinking you're getting a deal. Oh, my God, this is a great deal. Nah. Right? And find out the thing is like $50 or $100. So that's what they do to African Americans all over. So when you're coming, they think you have money. Mm -hmm. And so they'll charge you three, four. Um, as a matter of fact, um, this remember the guy that I was telling you about, Prempe, right? right? Yeah, he's well connected in Accra. So he won't let anyone screw me over. Never. How, right? How'd you, how'd you find him again? My aunt. Okay. And the reason why is this. He built a house in Kumasi for my aunt over 20 years ago. Mm. Right, because my uncle, my uncle kept on sending money um, to to his brother to build a farm. They were going to go in business together, right, Dinus? Right. And guess what happened? Somebody took the money around. His own brother duped him, <sighs> took all the money, and didn't build the house, didn't build the the farm. And then so my my aunt said, "Listen, go to this guy Prempe." I trust him more than I trust any of my family members. So at first I was kind of like, I, I kind of like checked them out, you know, just checked them out. Just, I started doing like little by little just to see if he would do what uh, my aunt says that he would do. And um, he checked out. So he's the one that, he's the one that goes downtown and applies for the permits uh, Cause he knows people in Ghana. Cause the minute, like, if I show my face, mm -hmm. and by the way I'm dressed, though, even though I'm a Ghanaian, they would know that I'm not living in the in Ghana, right? And they're gonna say, "Oh, brother, what can you do for me? Oh, give me something small. Oh, you you know, you have to bribe them. You have to do this, right? That's when you have to bribe. That's why he does all this stuff for me. And then so." Like you know, when you're building the house, like if you're if you ever go into a place where they're building new uh, new homes, uh, they'll they'll like say, "Oh, stop, stop building with red paint." 
right? That means that you have to go to like the housing department to get a permit to build the house, uh, to make sure the house is up to code, right? right? So you have to have your building plans. If you even in Ghana, if you try to get the building plan through somebody, they'll try and charge you like, if you're an African American, they'll say, oh yeah, the plans will be a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars for a building plan, right? right? And I got my plan for like a thousand cities, which is like 300 bucks. Let me ask you this, um, Philip. So how are the uh, Chinese building up so much? Because I, I just have a feeling the Chinese are getting duped the way. They're coming, people. look, they're all over. Look, um, even in BA, right? In Sunyane, right? Up up north, um, you have these gold mines. They have gold mines. They were doing like independent uh, with the previous government. Right. These guys will come there and do like independent mining. How can you go to another country and say that I'm, I'm mining independently? How? So these guys come and like maybe rent apartments or rent houses and just mine. Or they'll just buy land and build. And so you have a, you have a like I told you, you have a Chinese community in Accra uh, by the West Hills Mall. They're all over the place. You'll be surprised. Right. A lot of Chinese folks in Ghana. There's Chinese everywhere. Yeah. But <laughs> in Accra. In Accra and Tema. And even in Sunyane and uh, another place called Konongo. Konongo is like, it's like one of the poorest places in Ghana, right? Right. And it's it's like you're walking on gold. It's a gold mining town. Mm -hmm. But it's like people are living in huts. Wow. Yeah. What about um, little things like, are you going to have the wall AC units or actual like central air in your house? I'm going to have like... Uh, those wall AC, not like the ones that penetrate outside. It's like, it's like, it's got this unit. It's inside. Right. Yeah. And it cools out. Like, so I'm going to have one in each room. Okay. And then, and then two in the hallway because the hall is big. Right. So I have one on opposite sides, uh, one on one wall and one on the other wall. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, uh, let me, what about you? So did you spend a lot of time in Kumasi? Bro. No, I mean, um, yeah, Kumasi, I've been to Kumasi like a couple times, but Kumasi is kind of old. Um, it, the, now, now, Kumasi, the roads were bad, terrible. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, and plus, you you know, you go to that market in Kumasi where the bus depot is, and people mm -hmm. are selling all the roads and just choked it up. Uh, you can't even drive through Kumasi uh, without, I mean, getting caught up with somebody selling something in front of you. Right. And so, well, that's kind of, well, that's kind of like Africa. That, that's pretty much everywhere I've been. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's certain parts where, you know, it's kind of like not allowed. But once yeah. you get into like the the city or out, you know, it, it's people are, you know, selling on the corners everywhere. Yeah, that's, on the true. Street. that's true. But I, I mean, like if I was if like if I was advising uh, someone to build in Ghana, mm -hmm. I would build in Accra because Accra has everything. It's at least right. close to what you're used to, right? I wouldn't say go to Kumase or to Sunyane because once you get above Accra, uh, things start to get, uh, things start to go down a little bit. You know that. It's like, right. uh, Absolutely. The school systems are not as good and the living conditions, you know, like uh, internet and stuff like that. Right. They start becoming problems. And then so if you're coming from America, I would say go to Accra. Mm. You know, but if you, I mean, like, I know what you like too because I'm watching your channel all the time. And you like to go into villages and meet up with the people and things like that. Right. The visit. But the normal American person uh -huh. to, to leave from America and live like that, mm -hmm. it's going to be very difficult. Right. 
You know what I mean? They're not going to be able to do it. So I wouldn't advise them to do it. And plus in Accra, you can make all kinds of connections. People from England, uh, Germans, uh, I mean, all over Europe. I mean, uh, uh, blacks from Europe and blacks from uh, uh, all over, Jamaica, you name it. All of them are in Ghana, in Sunyani. I mean, not Sunyani, but uh, in Accra. Hmm. Yeah, Accra is like, I mean, Accra is nice. Um, they've got restaurants, they've got nightclubs, um, you name it. So if I was advising an American person, I would say go to Accra. Go to Accra, okay. Yeah. Okay. What about, um? In the red wants to know, did you have to build now the borehole? Does that serve as a septic system as well, or do you have to build something no, separate? No. Uh the septic system is uh it's like now they have this thing called uh the it's uh it's like a bio tank, it's a bio it's kind of small. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you don't even have to dig, it it gets rid of it. It's 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 incredible. It's they've got this new really uh, technology going on. Oh. The borehole is for the water. Right. The borehole is um is for the water. Now, me and you, we can't drink that water. Uh, they'll they'll tell you, oh yeah, the well water is pure and all of that stuff. If if, if I drink that water, my stomach will run for days. Right. Right. But you can me use it to, yeah, you can use it to cook. You can use it to bathe. All of that, and then um you're drinking water you buy voltic or something like that i don't even buy the, the the plastic one i don't like that one the one that you squeeze and drink out of mm -hmm. i don't like that one i'm just buying a a bottle of water from a store not from the street from a store i actually i kind of i'm i've grown accustomed to the little um uh Classic water fountain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've definitely grown accustomed to those. Yeah. Um, in, in, in Africa, I mean, the first one I was cheap. a teenager very for the first time, I was like, "What is what?" I didn't get it, but I, I've grown accustomed to them. Yeah, and they're cheap. I mean, it's not bad. You you can drink that. That's pure, you know, because I think they treat that water. But I'm talking about water coming from the well. Mm -hmm. um, normally. Um, some Ghanaians can drink it, but most don't. Uh huh. Yeah, you use it for cooking, and that's it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Shana Nadu says, "Ha ha, the street bottled water is resealed." Is that true? <laughs> yeah, some of them. You got to be careful. Oh, okay. Well, damn. <laughs> well, that's why I said don't buy from the street. Buy it from the store. Okay. Yeah. Buy it from the store. Yeah, because I was definitely buying water off the street. Yeah, don't. don't I mean, <laughs> not the I mean the, the one in the plastic container, the one that you squeeze. That's yeah, not, they can't they can't up they can't like uh take water and put it back and do all of that. They can't do that one. But like the twist top. Right. Yeah, be you careful to, be careful with the twist tops. You mess around with that one. Okay, well, I have been I bought plenty of twist top um water off the off the uh, street so yeah. I'm, I'm still yeah, and they'll do it and they'll boil it they'll boil the water and they maybe pour it back so that they'll kill all the bacteria in it okay okay well at least, at least they have enough sense to do that yeah. All right. okay yeah they're not going to just pour regular water in there no because if someone gets sick they'll come and look for you the next day oh really yeah they'll, they'll be like look i got sick from drinking your water or something All right, let's see what else we got here in the chat room. Brother, thank you for um for, for coming on last minute. But when you when you told me your story, I was like, we gotta have a mind to, to you know be a testimony to um uh come on and 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 speak on on what you what you have done. Uh, someone in the chat room wants to know as far as having paved roads to your house, uh how's that process? Well, okay, so to get to our neighborhood, right? Um on Cape Coast Road is paved, and then you have that bridge and all of that. So everything is good. Like, but then you get you're going into the neighborhood. The main road into the neighborhood is paved also. But then once you get inside the neighborhood, that's when you, you meet up with that dirt. Right? But mm -hmm. since it's such like a 
it's considered an expensive neighborhood. So the dirt is like flat, but it's dirt. Even to Asamoah Jan's house, it's dirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I could, I could handle that. I mean, it's, you know. Yeah, but it's good. It's not too bad. I can, I can drive up the hill with no problems. No problems. I was telling people in the chat room when I was in Mali in a uh, Doga country in the villages, I drank the water from the uh, from the uh, well, and I had I had caught wow. di diarrhea for uh for like a for that that whole night. So oh yeah, don't do that, man. Because yeah, yeah, yeah I did it. The water was so good though, it was so good. Yeah, but you know, like if you if you keep drinking that water like that untreated, you're gonna get like take one. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah, don't do it. Um, you get take one. And uh, you got to take like these pills to deworm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so don't, I mean, you know, I mean, you can eat the food because it's cooked. Right. But like, I don't eat salad because salad, you can wash it with the water and some of the bacteria can get on the salad. Anything okay. that they don't cook, don't eat it. Don't eat it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I just, I drank the water from the well and, you know, I just know that night I was. I was on the and you were on the toilet like not, not even on the toilet day i was in the poop in the latrine with the, with the hole in the ground i was hovering <laughs> yeah the whole, for that, that that whole night uh for drinking you, know, you, know, you know what they call it in ghana right what do they call it they call it we team so okay. like you're like you're sitting on it right you're, you're bending on it and uh -huh. then when you take that poop it's such a long way it goes then it hits the thing that's why they call it like that Okay. All right. All right. So, so yeah, I, I I drank that water and yeah, I was on that all night and lesson learned. But I would say this though, I drank the water in the city in Nairobi and that water was delicious. Oh really? Yeah, and, and I'm and I'm fine. I'm all in one piece. But I did drink the water in Nairobi, Kenya, and the water in Nairobi, I don't know what they put in it, but it was like sweet. And it but was. You know, like I mean, you know. Um, it won't be like an insult to them if you don't take that chance. Like me, when I go to a place and they offer me the water, I'm like, no, no, I'm not thirsty unless I'm getting it from a bottle. Right. right. And this way, you're not insulting them and saying, oh, no, 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 I don't want it. You just say, no, no, I, I had enough. I'm, 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 I'm not thirsty. And they'll just, they'll be fine, you know. Because sometimes, you know, when you have blind stuff, people think like, oh, man, you're insulting them. You're not, you know. But you, you just... You don't want to get sick because I hate I hate getting sick when I'm away. Just when you're traveling, yeah, like you're traveling, you're I sick. Because you want to be around, you want you you know you don't have time to waste. You have like maybe two weeks to go and look around, and um, you you can't afford to get sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, brother, we uh, what we'll do? We'll go ahead and uh, hey, what's up, Emma's top ten? Emma's top ten from Cameroon. He's uh, he popped into the chat. Uh, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and, and close out, Philip. Man, uh, anything else you wanna you wanna share in closing? But what you're saying is you would recommend Accra because I was considering Kumasi at one time. Yeah, but Kumasi, Kumasi is a big city, right? Right. Yeah, and it's it's similar to Accra, but it's not as good. Right. And I I, I agree with that because the and roads five, in Kumasi five are hours away. It's five hours away. It's it's Accra is crowded, but Kumasi is um, more crowded. And on top of that, on top of that, uh, to get to the airport, you got to go. You got to go to Accra. You got to go to Accra right. for this. You got to go to Accra for everything, you know. And then so right. uh, for the average American, Accra is the uh, Accra is the wisest choice, of course. Okay. You know? And then as as it gets bigger. Then you can go on the outskirts of Accra and things like that. But Accra is a nice city, you know, and um, you're not gonna you're not gonna miss out, uh, especially if you're in Accra. You're not gonna miss out that much. And access to so America you, is like right there. It's it's like seamless. Direct, yeah. The, the direct flight. Um, JFK. Direct flights to New York, to DC, right. to all over, all over the US. Right. Yeah. So that's what I would say. Because Kumasi, then you got to get on a bus five hours to Accra, then get on a plane, you know. Um, and like I said, Kumasi is older. 
you know, a is more modern. Uh, it's just all around better, I think, you know. And uh, and, and I'm telling you, because um, I don't want people to go to Africa and then be like, man, damn, this is a bad decision, you know? Right, right. Yeah. But if you're in Accra and you, um, and they have associations like you can join, um, they have a, a, an African-American association, mm -hmm. they have a Caribbean association that you can join, they have Americans in Cape Coast, you know, I mean, Cape Coast, um, I mean, Cape Coast is further up and it's nice to have the castle and all of that. But Cape Coast, I don't think is really all that nice, you know. Yeah, um, it, I, I love the, how, how can I put it? I love the city of Elmina because it's just the way. It's got the it, castle and it's old and yeah, yeah. It's old. I love that, but you're right. It's just, it's too far. It's too far. And but it's a beautiful city. I mean, it's, oh, it's a beautiful city. city. Yeah. Yeah. And they've got those hills. You can build on the hills and things like that. But once you're going to Cape Coast, you see all the 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 the, the wooden homes, the the huts, and all that stuff, right? Cape Coast is uh, a little bit old. That used to be the capital. You know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. They moved it out of there because it was kind of small. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like really a fisherman's town. They fish a lot. A lot of fishing, uh, and you and you have to come to Accra for everything, right? Yeah, so I wouldn't go there, but it's beautiful though. If you can, you can get uh, you can get land by the beach for like a couple thousand dollars. Really? Yeah. Do you know um ah oh, what's it uh One Africa? Did you have you have you been to One Africa yet in Cape Coast? Um no. It's it's a uh, resort owned by a black American woman, her her husband and um her son. Oh yeah, some of them that, uh, look, I I met this African American woman. I was walking, I was walking by the castle, and my wife and my my daughter, you know, because my daughter was born here. You know, my daughter, um, uh, she was born here, and then she they heard my daughter talking and everything, and they said, oh. And I said, oh, we're coming from Maryland. And that woman has been there for like over 50 years, Dinas. It might be. Her. Well, no, she's only been there. She moved there in, I think, in the early 80s. Really? A black American woman I'm talking about, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have a lot of black Americans in Cape Coast. Right. Yeah, because, you know, like some of them wanted to go by and live right by the castle and things like that, you know, returning home. And Cape Coast is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It's beautiful. But if you're not a retired person, someone like you, um, okay, let's say like us, we're, uh, when we're going to Ghana, we're going for business, okay? Right, if right. you go for business, you need to be in Accra. Or maybe, maybe Kumasi, maybe, right? But you need to be in Accra. Accra is where all the opportunity is. But then once your base is there, then you can, you can travel up north to, Tamale and Sunyane and those places if you need to reach out and do some business that way, right? But right. I wouldn't base out there having to go to Accra for my business. I'll be in Accra already around all the business and all the hustle and bustle and then deal the business um, into the village areas and things like that. That's how I would do it. Mm. So you have your house. This is the last question. Uh, you have your house that's almost completed in Accra. In Accra. Mm -hmm. So are, is the plan to move there permanently or be back and forth? Like, what's what's the long term end game? What's the end game? Long term is um, I'm I'm gonna retire there. Okay. Yeah, but I'll be going back and forth. Right? Okay. And also, um, I have another friend, and uh, she lives in Washington D.C. And what she does is uh, she bought a house on Gory Island. Wait, wait, where? In, in, in Decker? In the car? Yeah. How'd she buy a house in Gory Island? She, she bought the land. She's put up the house. When? When, when, did, when she buy it? Man, look, I've got to hook you up with her. She, wait, I, got, I, need to, yeah, I need to talk to her because from my understanding, like buying oh. land on Gory Island is all the land is gone. Like, I mean, you can't. It's not, well, oh, uh, this one here. You know what she did? Well, she was born in St. Louis, okay? Okay, yeah. She was like, she was always talking about Africa. She was born in St. Louis. Um, 
She bought two houses in Washington, D.C. when no one wanted them, those big old home townhomes. Yeah, yeah. And, and back in Washington, D.C. Was, was the hood. Yeah, uh -huh. nobody wanted them at that right. time. But so what she did was she just kept it, chopped it up, and rented it out to students and just random people. And anyway, she, she, she's got so much equity in those homes. Right. Um, she took some of that money out, and, and then she was living in Gabon for a little bit. She lived in Gabon for like several years, and then bought some plots on Gory Island. I gotta talk to her because from because oh, when I went to Gory Island in two thousand and I think that was thirteen maybe uh -huh. or fourteen. I yeah. asked like, "Hey, is any land for well, you can't find it anymore? It's, no, 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 it's no, no, a no. beautiful place. Oh yeah, you can't. You can't. No. no. Well, that you're gonna spend money. Right. That's when you have to spend real money. Right. Now she. Uh, um, she just came back with my wife. They went to uh, Egypt. Mm. Yeah, so this is the second time my wife went to Egypt. Um, and that, uh, my friend Kuda, she took her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she's she been all over Africa, man. She lived in Gabon for years. Her daughter grew up in Gabon. She was born in the U.S., but then they went to Gabon. She she grew up there. She speaks fu uh, fluent French. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, I need to hook you up with her. Yeah, she, yeah, connect me, please. Yeah, she is a historian. She knows all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's an African American, and um, she's gonna build over there in Gory Island and move there after she retires. She's it's about the, to retire soon. It's just the only it, it, only thing. It would be inconvenient because there's really you would have to catch the ferry to like. It's do not. Anything. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. See. I wouldn't do it unless you're retiring or something like that. If you're retiring, that's fine. But if you're not retiring and you're a business-minded person, you've got to live in the city. Right. You've got to live in the city. Because as, um, as an American person, I just, I don't know. I can't, see, I can't see them living in the outskirts in places like Sunyane, Tachiman, uh, Gori Island. Because you've got to be, you got to now just be rich then, right? Right. Just you can just pick up and just go anywhere you want and live on your retirement, right? But if you're like looking to build income and uh, build an empire or something like that, right? And your money is going to take you a long way. Like if I take one dollar, that's four point five, okay? Mm -hmm. And look at that house that I'm building in Ghana right now, right? Mm -hmm. That house is going to cost me close to $500,000 to build here, right? At least $500,000 uh, plus the land. In Maryland, the land is like a couple hundred dollars for a plot, right? right. And not even talking about the structure. And, and in Ghana, and people say, oh yeah, the Africans um, don't like African-Americans. That's not true. You've been to Africa, man. They, they love you. Right. I don't understand what these people are talking about, man. I think I think they're speaking on, like you said, how they're overcharging for shit. Yeah, they, they're gonna scam you. They're gonna they'll scam their own brother, and they're from Ghana. Right. True. True. You know what I mean? They'll scam you because you're. They think you're coming for money. They'll scam you, and they'll scam me. I know that. So then, if you if you know that, then they can't scam you. Because, like, just go there, and the only way they can earn your trust, I mean, the only way they can earn your trust is by just showing you. Just go there and don't trust anyone. Mm -hmm. Don't trust them until they show you otherwise. Because if you, if you do it the other way around, you're going to come out with a heartache, man. Right. You're going to get hurt. You're going to lose your money, and you're going to have a bad experience, right? And then so uh, that's what I want to educate um, people on. I want to just educate them, just say, man, look, don't go and get ripped off. And if you mm -hmm. don't go and get ripped off, it's an ex it's excellent, man. It's, it's a nice life. Um, when I go, it's a, it's a different kind of pressure. Uh, I'm not like constantly on the computer right. or cell phone, people calling you and calling you. You know what I mean? I, 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 I already, it's a different kind of pressure. I already know. I already yeah. know. Last you know, question, I promise. Know. You don't have to spend too much on it. What's your thoughts on the healthcare system? Uh, that healthcare sucks. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, that healthcare. I went to the hospital, mm -hmm. uh, Kolebu Hospital. 
Okay. Man, diners. And I went to the hospital in Sunyana. It's supposed to be like one of the top so-called hospitals. Right. And um, my father, I told you my father passed away four years ago, right? Right. My father came into the USA in 1968. My father came to the US in 1968, okay? Um, someone saw him playing in the Olympics for Ghana and brought him to America to play mm. soccer, believe it or not. And wow. then so, um, so fast forward to 1993, my father says, you know what? I'm gonna go and retire in Ghana, okay? So mm -hmm. he, he, he does a nice building. And even on that building that my father, my father was trying to build, someone scammed him, right? They had to knock the whole building up because you know, like, let's say you're building a house, you're supposed to put 10 bags of cement, right? Right. Now, if you're not there to watch that contractor, all of a sudden, he's gonna put seven bags of cement instead of 10. And that's compromising your safety. Of course. But they just only worried about that money, right? And then so my father went down there and he saw the house and he had to knock the whole house down. After 1993, spending over 50,000 US dollars building that house, had to knock it down and build it back up again, right? And this was like uh, family members doing it, okay? And so my father goes back 1993 uh, to retire and uh, so he started like having stomach problems, okay? And for two years, Dinus, they couldn't diagnose it. They were saying, oh, oh, it's a, it's a stomach infection. It's a stomach infection. And then they, then they put my father on dialysis, right? Mm -hmm. Make a long story short, my father calls my, uh, calls my sister and say, you know what, uh, Amy, I'm sick. I'm sick. I think there's something wrong. So my sister flies my father to Miami, takes him to the hospital with yes, like self, yes, huh? yes, he has cancer. Let me guess. He has cancer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Colon cancer that spread throughout his body. And you know, that's like a 90% chance of success if they catch it early. Right. And, um, my father came, they did the laser operation and he was fine. He was feeling, he was feeling great. And within like a year later, the, the, the cancer grew back bigger than what it was before. Mm -hmm. And he passed away shortly after that. But they couldn't even diagnose that. And then so what I would say is this. Um, if you're in Africa, I would come here for the checkups and then go back. Oh, OK. Right. Or you've got to find a doctor. Like, see, if you have money, you can have those personal doctors. Right. They have like their own private practices where um, you can go to them, you know, just pay a little bit of money and you're fine. But the actual hospitals in Ghana, I wouldn't trust it at all. I, I, I didn't even want to go in there. Wow. Yeah, I, I wouldn't trust it at all. And that's what happened to my father. He died. Oh. And he died, um, and he wasn't even that old. My father died at 78. And he was pretty strong. You know, he was like an athlete. He, he was like an Olympian. He was like top class. Um, mm -hmm. Won like two African Cups. He's like one of the greatest players to ever come out of Ghana. You know, and no one could help him. He was part of um, the government when Kufour was in charge. You know, Kufour was like responsible uh, for bringing Ghana out, you know, a cry. He was building the roads. He was doing all these. And he was the one that like really brought democracy, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, like he brought those terms, like if you, you can't serve more than two terms and things like that, he brought that out, you know? Um, so he did great things for Ghana and still couldn't save them. Wow. Well. Yeah. Well, brother, again, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, if you want to, you give people your contact information real quick, that's up to you. Yeah, um, um, you can call me anytime. Um, my telephone number is 301-613-0968. All right, perfect, guys. So text. reach out to the bro. Yeah, text me. If you call, like, some, I get so many calls. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, like, people want me to recruit them and stuff like that. <laughs> right, right, right. So <laughs> send him a text message, everybody. Yeah. Send him a text. Send me a text.
before you call and serious calls only. Don't don't be yeah. calling asking those stupid questions. Yeah, send me a text <laughs> and um definitely um you know I'll hook them up. Um and like one once that building is finished, right? Um uh, if you want to go to Accra and just actually stay somewhere for like a week or two to just actually get to learn the place, you know, go to the art center. Uh, right. Go to Cape Coast, um, tour all over Accra, and maybe even go to Kumasi just to see how Kumasi is, you know, like a one day trip. So right. you get up in the morning, early in the morning, get to Kumasi by like 10 o'clock, stay there until like maybe in the evening, and then come back to Accra. Or the hotels are very cheap, you know that. You can find Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I stay, I stayed in the hotel for like 15, 20 bucks a night. Yeah. yeah. And then so you stay there maybe for one day. And then come back to Accra or even go up further north in Tamale. Mm -hmm. uh, Tamale is kind of rural, though. It's not, uh, it's, I mean, I mean, why go and live in, in, in Ghana, especially if you're an American citizen, and then have no access to anything? You know what I mean? Well, you know, a lot of people are on this off, off the grid living. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. I wouldn't be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, brother, again, thank you so much, so much for joining us, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us as well. Please hit that like button. Please share. People who super chatted, thank you for super chatting. Hopefully, you guys found value in this. Uh, make sure you go to Search for Uhuru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, subscribe if this is your first time going coming to the platform. Also, go to Africa Personified on those same platforms. Make sure you go to Africa Personified on Africa. Search for Uhuru.com. DynastyMirror.com and Amazon.com. Search your name, Dynasty Mirror. Please buy a book. Philip, I'm going to get with you later on offline. But again, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Let me I tell am, you man. What, man. I'm telling you, you don't think that it's, reach, it's reaching a lot of people, man. Let me tell you uh -huh. what. Um, I'm here because of you, man. I'm telling you. Seriously. I appreciate I it. I wouldn't have it, done it. I appreciate it, man. I'll see you soon. I'm, like I said, I have my oh, yeah. ticket. I'm telling you, homecoming. Well, let's well, see. I won't. I'm gonna come before homecoming because I probably it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, before it doesn't matter. You know, I'll hook you up. All right, perfect, man. All right, everybody. Okay. Till next time. Peace. All right.